Hey everyone, so I want to talk a little bit about uh, prototypes and why they can be magical and, and a great way to cut through whether you're working in an organization or you're starting a new company. And I'm going to back that up with a quick story or two. So first of all, I have this thing, ABC Always Be Coding, that I sometimes say. And um, what that comes from is basically I believe that everything that I've done or anything interesting uh, that I built or some success or, or you know getting hired um, anything that good that's happened in that regard has usually come about from me just building and coding things I think that um, code speaks louder than just about everything and uh, building prototypes is a great way to see if something works and to more importantly show others um, that something can't work so I want to tell a little bit of a story um, we'll just back up to my first company secret um, secret was not on a social network that uh, picked up, got pretty popular in 2014. That was a whole crazy story. You can look that up on, on the Google um, if you're interested in, in what happened there. But needless to say, um, I will say that we ended up raising about uh, $35 million in the first six months. We had about 15 million users before we shut down. Um, you know, valued at over $100 million. It was a very quick overnight success, and then ultimately it failed. But again, that was, a, that was another story. Um, but Secret came about because I built a small little prototype. <clears throat> I wanted to build an anonymous social network or anonymous messaging app, basically. And so I also wanted to learn Go at the time. I was, uh, you know, I was interested in Go. This is again back in 2013. Um, so I built this little website where I could send an anonymous message to anyone. If I just put in their phone number, I put in their email address. Uh, it was a very simple, plain page that just had nothing except, you know, type a message, add a phone number, and it sent a message. And it was super simple, dead simple. I built it on an app engine and, and Go. Uh, I sent it to my friend Chris, who was a, a designer slash product slash kind of hacker friend who worked at Google with me. And he loved it. He thought this was a pretty cool idea. He did some mock-ups immediately. Once he saw it, he saw the prototype, he could feel it. And so he was able to, to, to kind of grasp what I was doing. And then he built a prototype on, on iOS and he did some you know fun things with uh, with like being able to put a photo on and, and um, you know, change the background and so on and so forth. My point is that um, Secret simply came about over a weekend of just building this little prototype and sharing it with a friend. I could have talked to him about it. Chances are it probably wouldn't have gone that way. Instead, I just by myself built it and that just, that's, that was a case of show, don't tell, right? But more interesting story I want to talk about is when I joined Postmates. So when I joined Postmates, I, I talked about this in a previous video. Um, I was tasked with leading this team to uh, essentially rebuild the app, rebuild the web app and the mobile apps and do all of that in about four months. One thing that I didn't like about the app though was the search, uh, search capabilities. Back then, um, Foursquare, or uh, sorry, uh, Postmates was powered by Foursquare, um, at least the search was. So when you actually, this is for the first maybe four years of, of Postmates existence, maybe five years, you would type a name of a restaurant or, or something into, into the search in Postmates app. It would literally go to Foursquare, do a search, pull back some restaurants and then match that with uh, the restaurants were already in the database in Postmates or maybe add some new restaurants. So it kind of used Foursquare in that regard. Um, needless to say, it wasn't very flexible. And so internally, they were rebuilding the search, uh, the search experience already. But they had gone about it where they had this entire team that was separate from the team that I was leading, which was we were responsible for the entire app itself, the consumer application. Of course, search is an important part of that. But search had lived over in this other team. And it was under a director. It was a director, an engineering manager. Both of them had experience. Uh, with search, uh, I think that some of them had, uh, one of them had experience at Google working on search, and then there was a big team under them, about six engineers and some data scientists mixed in, and they were effectively building the engine of a new search. They'd been working on it for about six months, and you would give it a restaurant or a type of food, and it would give you back a list of restaurants. So they were building this with Elasticsearch, they were building it all out, um, you know, the infrastructure on AWS, and it was this big thing. And I thought, like, oh, that's interesting, like, the, First of all, they're trying to be better than Foursquare. That was their litmus test. And, but it was an input-output machine, right? You take some query, and then you output, and you get a list of restaurants. I'm like, that's not the whole search experience. What we want is something that, like in the product, like anything, you, you, you can type. You can type a restaurant. You can start typing it, and it'll auto-suggest, or it'll show you results as you're typing. It has this very fast experience. Also, we want to be able to give you items. If you search for chicken, it maybe has some, I don't know, a chicken burger from, from Shake Shack or something that appears in the list. And so there's just this very dynamic experience that we want. Maybe we want to put sponsored items into that list as well. Who knows, right? So it just didn't sit well with me that they'd been working on this for a long time and they, they had this thing that they were planning to launch and it was going to be part of the product that we were building, but the experience wouldn't have been any different. It would have been much the same. I kind of argued this for a little bit. I remember having conversations with various people, but I didn't want to 
ruffle feathers. I didn't want to get people angry with me or, or um, you know, push too hard. Even though I disagreed with the approach that they were doing, I decided instead, okay, well, fine. I'm going to go and build my own little prototype of search. And what I did is use this product called called Algolia. It's a it's a SaaS company. It's online. This is not a sponsor or anything like that. Great product, though. I think a lot of companies do use Algolia. It's essentially a full text search. You upload your data, and then you can set some parameters and do a text search over that. And you can do things like distance searches and geo you know geo searches and category searches and all these sorts of sorts of things that, that you really want. And that's ultimately what we wanted with with this kind of search is, is text search over all these restaurants and all the food and items that we had. So I uploaded a bunch of production data, did a test, and um, and then uh, kind of built a little web app. This was, again, over a weekend that I built this. Um, showed that, well, the restaurant, like upload the restaurants and a bunch of catalog data, which was the, the item data, and it just worked, right? I could type in this little input box and show the restaurants that we had in our database. It, it worked really well. If I, if I misspelled things, it would fi- find the best match. Um, did all the things that you want with respect to a, a pretty good full text search. Um, and even Elasticsearch out of the box is not that great at, right? That's good at, a, a do, at um, document search and that sort of stuff, but it's not so great at a good, robust text search engine. Again, it wasn't a, it wasn't a thing that was just ready to go into the product, but I demonstrated that this could work and it was only done in a weekend. And so I'd shown showed some people, I showed the people at search over there, I showed the, the CEO, like, look, this is where we should be going. We should just use this technology. You talk to the infrastructure team. Long story short, after about a couple of weeks later, you know, well, I would say that um, the, the, the folks who were working on search over there were kind of resistant to what I was doing a little bit. They're like, well, you know, why, why go and do that when we're already building this thing? It's kind of a little territorial. Um, but ultimately there was an executive decision to move that team over to uh, work on something else um, and to move search into into my team that's what happened that whole team was disbanded um, we didn't end up using really any of their technology uh, instead we built on top of, top of algolia to this day it still uses algolia you can download postmates and check it out it works very well and i will also say that about one mid-level engineer had basically supported all of search um, for the two years year and a half that i was there from then on like i'd started it um, and he, he basically managed the entire backend and the pipelines, and of course the product teams, the web team, and the, the iOS team, the Android team, they integrated with it, you know, built the UIs for all of that. Um, but that was it, we didn't have a big team, we just stood on the shoulders of Algolia, and it, and it worked, and it worked great. And so that was a result of just a prototype. Now if I just talked about it and roadmapped it and, and tried to get a team to do it and like tried to get sign off ahead of time, I think it would have been much, much more difficult. Um, than the path I took, which is just build it and um, fucking that just, just cuts through, and that was uh, that was a really good experience. And I, there's uh, I've had countless experiences like that before, and I've seen other people do it. And so you know, think about that, right? So sometimes when you're in an organization, or you have an idea, or you have a thought, or something you want to try, and you're talking about it, and people just maybe aren't connecting to it, find a way to build that prototype or to show it. Um, a lot of people aren't very good at visualizing a thing, uh, or they don't trust, and so. That prototype uh, is magical uh, in many ways to them, and, and um, of course the flip side is when people see prototypes like that, they're like, okay, cool, that's awesome, let's let's do it, let's ship it and launch it. And of course, a lot of times there's still a lot of work to do before it's ready to go into production. That's my story. Remember, prototypes are magical. I think it's time well spent. You either uh, make change out of it or, or create a good change out of it, or um, or you learn something. Yeah, if you like this uh, video, of course, please uh, subscribe. Um, really helps me out or drop a comment and tell me about what you'd like for me to talk about. I love the feedback you guys give. I really appreciate it and it's been highly useful and actionable so um, it definitely counts and matters.